1928, two white men named Freeman Gotham and Charles Crow created a radio show entitled Amos and Andy, starring them as two black Chicago immigrants named Amos and Andy. The massively popular radio show aired on local Chicago radio station WMAQ before moving to NBC Radio in 1929. From 1951 to 1953, there was even a television series by the same name. But, despite the all-black cast of the television series, it seemed more racist than the radio show due to its portrayal of African Americans. The main characters were Amos, the straight man, Andy, the clown, and Kingfish, a character that would lead the duo into schemes or trouble. George Kingfish Stevens was a member of the secret society known as Mystic Knights of the Sea. Godson and Crow were both Freemasons, and that was a clear inspiration. To provide some history, the show started off in January of 1926 as Sam and Henry, a show on the local Chicago radio station WGN. When Gotham and Carell moved to WMAQ, the show simply changed names as well, as WGN had rights to the name Sam and Henry. So, they were simply changed to Amos and Andy. Before this, the duo had performed minstrel shows to facing African Americans before in a way celebrating them on Amos and Andy. There are many storylines, including Amos and Andy running the first year taxi company, and Amos getting married. In 1929, the show became massively popular enough to garner a television series for three years, toys made, and the show even switched gears a bit and became more like a television sitcom, changing from a serialized drama about Amos and Sapphire to one-off situational comedies about Andy and the Kingfish. The radio show ran for 27 years until the NAACP protested the television series and got it cancelled. Despite its all-black cast, and the only all-black cast television series for 20 years until Sanford and Son in 1972, it seemed more racist than the radio show, mostly due to the lawyer character on Gonquin J. Calhoun. Many, including the NAACP, did not approve of how African Americans would seem to white people, as they are speaking for a group that never had a chance to speak for themselves. The NAACP were found as normal African Americans being portrayed as lazy buffoons, but not hard workers like lawyers or doctors. Next, life was hard for most people if you weren't rich in the 1920s to 30s, due to the economic downturn of the Great Depression lasting from 1929 to 1939. Most people were poor due to the Industrial Revolution, especially African Americans because of the Jim Crow laws, and the Great Migration from the South to the Northeast, Midwest, and West that lasted from 1916 to 1916. The radio show characters like Amos or Sapphire you were supposed to care about. There were storylines about the characters' lives. While there were fool characters like Andy and the Kingfish, they showed African Americans of all types, and not all of them spoke in the stereotypical dialects that the television characters did. In fact, the television series, on the other hand, which mostly only had Amos as a narrator, Andy and the Kingfish were the main focus of the show, just being idiots. The radio show also gave context and realistic background for the characters, such as the Great Migration to Chicago, where the show took place, the television series even moving the characters to Harlem. This is one reason why the television series was considered more offensive than the radio show. The NAACP had other reasons relating to how white Americans would think of black Americans inspired by the show. In addition, doctors, lawyers, and other black workers being portrayed as quote-unquote wax thieves, cowards, ignorant, and dodging work of all kind. Now, that isn't to say that the radio show didn't cause controversy either. The Pittsburgh Corner, a smaller newspaper, tried to organize a boycott for the radio show, but abandoned it after a while as they couldn't have a bigger impact. Well, Amos and Andy has somewhat fallen into obscurity, and when the show is brought up, it's usually in a negative light and related to the racist aspects at the time. And up! And up! The fear! It was so popular that businesses such as movie theaters, department stores, restaurants, and bars all had their radios set up to play the show, not to lose traction at 7 p.m. In Atlantic City, speakers were set up at street intersections to broadcast the program. The show was even inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame in 1988. Despite the controversy, the television series is still notable for being the first to not only hire black actors, but having an all-black cast during the Jim Crow era. Most shows like that followed soon. 1972, Sanford and Son, based on Steptoe and Son, a show with an all-white cast, um, had all-black actors. But the crew were mostly white, and racism was used for humor as well. The show was massively successful as well, running six seasons, 136 episodes, five years, and two spin-offs. 
Godson and Crow also briefly tried to disguise the show, making it into an animated series about a fox and bear with the exact same voices, personalities, and dynamic as Andy and the Kingfish, entitled Calvin and the Colonel. The show did not last very long, and currently, not only are Amos, Andy, Kingfish, Sapphire, and other characters in the public domain, but all material created before 1948 and all DVDs online are bootlegs since no company wants to claim the show as their own. But white actors playing black characters is not a thing that's gone away, especially in animation. There are more and more black TV shows of different types. There are still a lot of negative aspects, such as the social concept known as tokenism, which is defined as the practice of only making a perfunctionary or symbolic effect to do a particular thing, especially by recruiting a small number of people of underrepresented groups in order to give the appearance of sexual or racial equality. There's still tropes leading to African Americans dying first in horror movies, and as recent as 2016 and 2017, there are controversies surrounding the Oscars not nominating a single black actor. On the other hand, other industries have changed as well, as the music industry with several famous jazz and later hip-hop artists, more African-American athletes are hired and respected, and even in things like comics, with Black Panther becoming the highest domestic gross film of 2018. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.